Hey guys, it's Lauren from Rustic Honey, and this week we have part two of our Easter DIYs. If you missed part one, go ahead and watch that first video so that you know what's going on, but we are going to upcycle a few bunnies, make a couple by hand, even though they looked like epic failures in the last video. It's gonna be great, come along. All right, I'm so glad you decided to stick with me for part two. In the last video, I mentioned I was really inspired by the Pottery Barn bunnies, but I didn't want to pay that price, so I thought I'd try to DIY my own. I found this little cutie at our local Dollar General for $8, and I thought it was about the perfect shape, so I gave it a spray paint with the ivory and then covered it with that textured spray paint I showed you in the last video. I loved where it was going, so I had to run back to Dollar General and get his bunny friend that's just a little bit taller, and he was about $10 at our local Dollar General. So the hardest part with these was to get the little flower pried from their little hands to get that out. It could have stayed on. It probably would have looked okay, but I just wanted that bare bunny look. So this is how they turned out, and they do have that little space in their hands, so um, there's a few different things that we could do with that little hole, I thought we could add a little egg. If you had a cute egg or if you wanted to hand paint one, you could you could use some hot glue and attach it there. They also could use a little ribbon around the neck if you wanted to add a pop of color. I'm just really liking the natural stone bunny look, so I'm gonna leave mine as is, and then I'm just gonna put these little sprigs in their hands just to complete the look um, just around the Easter basket on our centerpiece. That is where they have sat for the last week or so, and I'm kinda liking them there. For this year, that is where they're gonna sit. I love how they turned out and I feel like they really complete the centerpiece for our big dining room table. All right, let's jump into the next project. This was one of the ones I was not sure if I was gonna be able to redeem, but we're already so far deep into this, we might as well try to redeem this little bunny. I ended up putting this one together with Play-Doh, letting it dry, and I told you guys it helped it, it held its shape, which it did, but it did have a lot of cracks, because you know, Play-Doh does shrink up a little bit. So I went to the store and got some of that plastic wood. It's kind of like a, I guess it's like a nail filler. I don't know. I don't use enough of this stuff to know all of the different ones that are out there, but. It was at Walmart, it was less than 10 bucks, I think, and so I just grabbed the big tub, which I only ended up using a little bit of, so maybe I can use it again for another project, but I smeared it all over the bunny and tried to fill in all of the grooves and cracks, and it left it with just kind of a rugged texture on the outside, which you can sand down, it, you know, you can sand it, but I felt like I didn't want to, I didn't want to hurt the bunny, and I kind of liked the plaster look that it ended up with anyway. So it goes on pink, it dries natural, and then I decided to hit it with some spray paint. So I used the same spray paint that I used for the other project, which was the ivory and then the splatter texture that you saw. And I thought it turned out so cute. <laughs> He's still not perfect. He's a little abstract, just like my little paper mache bunny, but He's just gonna add the, a nice little charm in our mudroom. I thought it would be cute to actually use him as a planter, but I'm just gonna put some faux greenery in there right now, but maybe at one point a little succulent will make its way into this bunny. He is gonna sit in the entryway of our mudroom and he just kinda completes the space right there on top of the books. And I don't know about you, but whenever you turn your back for just a few seconds, <laughs> things happen in our house. What happened to the bunny here? Huh, I don't know. I bet my almost three-year-old knows what happened, but hey, mom tip, always, always get the washable markers. <laughs> I've learned that lesson the hard way, more than once. Um, there may have been a few Sharpies involved. And if, in case you were wondering how my little bunny <laughs> ended up, <laughs> He's still just as sad as ever, but I spray painted him also to make him look like concrete. So he's a little bit of a paperweight that's sitting on my counter now. I hope you guys enjoyed these DIYs. I thought I'd move into just a part two of this video and show you a little bit about what we've been doing on our farm lately. Last Sunday, we loaded up and went to part of our property where my husband had been wanting to burn off the timber before spring. So it was a pretty chilly day. This past weekend was very chilly here, but we bundled up and honestly, the fire felt pretty good by the time we got things rolling. We put in fire lines, as you saw in that first video, the kids were kind of helping get 
the leaves down to bare ground. And then my husband started using a drip torch just to create our fire line. And we created a fire line at the top of the hill where the wind was so that we could get a good area of black before we moved to the other side of the property and let the fire run into itself. So this is something I'm personally not very comfortable doing <laughs> by myself, but my husband has done this many times and he actually used to work in forestry and he actually loves this stuff. So it's right up his alley to do all of these um, land management things. So we set the fire and like I said, it felt pretty good that day. It was really nice to get outside and get some fresh air and be warm and toasty by the little fire here. But this fire will help to get rid of all of this ground cover in the timber that we have and it will promote new growth. So it's a way to also work on our land and to improve it. And of course the conservation and the habitat of our property, but um, just if for me, it felt like a really good way to like let go of the season and welcome in the new spring season. I don't know about you, but the smell of like um, bonfires or burning timber in this instance, it feels like a new beginning to me. Like you're kind of letting go of the old leaves and the old season and welcoming in something new. And just like you, we are so ready to bring in the new season of spring. The days are getting longer, we're starting to see the sun more, and it, it is energizing, which is good because we have a lot to do around the farm. We have a lot of calves hitting the ground this spring, and luckily a lot of healthy ones. We've been working our heifers to add them to our herd, so my husband's been busy with that this past week. And we also have a new bottle calf. Unfortunately, we lost a cow, so that means we have to bottle, calf, bottle feed a calf every day. But the boys are enjoying that chore, and so is my little Reese. She is all about it. So if you'd like to see more of our farm life behind the scenes, let me know in the comments below. I enjoy sharing this sort of thing, and I hope that it brightens your day. Thanks for joining me, and I'll hope to see you again soon.